with 2022 starting at a rather fast pace and February being a short and very busy month, we did struggle to put time aside for a dedicated outfit show episode. We did, however, manage a short day trip for White Muscle Cracker, even though it's very much out of season. So the ideal time to go fishing for these fish in Port Elizabeth is around August, September, October, November, as this coincides with the breeding migration that comes past the bay. So at this time of year, you'll find some impressive fish in both size and also their numbers. So yeah, we're a bit late to the party, but we did manage to find some and I'm very keen to share some information on one of my favorite fish. Okay, it's cracker time. We're here at Flat Rocks and we're doing the most important step and that's bait collection. So we're collecting armadillos or what do you call them? Saddlebacks. Saddlebacks. So these armadillos love the sand in between the rocks. So the theory is that saddleback or chitons can't don't actually have a sense of sight, but they can pick up on different um, so like light. So whether it's light or dark, so they have light receptors. And what's really cool is that some sh studies have shown that they have homing ranges. So they go out to feed and graze and then they come back to almost the exact same spot and although they don't have a sense of sight it's suggested that they do this by no mapping out the topography so like the shape of the rocks where they live and that's how they manage to find the route back home so yeah complicated little creatures actually so yeah he literally didn't see Frana coming there <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we're alone yet so, we're alone today. That doesn't happen often. There's no one here. A little bit light in the air, but... Yeah, well. Alice is a big key lot. Alice is a big key lot. <laughs> we're dying. So, Jenny. So hot. With cracker fishing, you wear your three more wetsuits in the middle of winter. Wait through some ice cold water. Not this time of the year. <laughs> Humid as man, sticky, icky. So there's the, the taking the juice, the I'm, nummies out. I wonder if this white stuff means it's a boy, boy saddleback. I don't think it's a boy saddleback. I think that means it's a boy saddleback. That's a boy. Yeah, that's definitely a boy. I mean, look at it. Much of a much, much boy than it's happening. <laughs> Bonbon for cracker. One is good. It's only gonna clip, so I got a little loopy. You must always put like the good stuff of your bait on the outside. I often see people trying to be skillum and they always put the hard stuff on the outside. Stunky. Yeah, the juicy stuff should be the piece. On everything. The fish. Pink prawn, sardine. I think that is good. That is good, yeah. That but is good. I think I've murdered over here. <laughs> Why are you running? 
<laughs> Not all of us have an Olympic toss, Prana. <laughs> I don't know, it felt a bit better than the normal one. Black tail. Felt bigger. Still felt small though. So let's start off with a little biology crash course on white muscle cracker Sparadon durbaniensis. It's an endemic species, meaning we find it in South Africa and South Africa only. And it also forms part of a group of fish called sparrows. And this is a very important group of fish because it includes a lot of our much loved recreational species, but they're also known to have complicated reproductive strategies, are slow growing, late maturing, and this makes them very susceptible to overfishing. So in terms of these reproductive strategies, some sparrows will be born female and then later change to male as they get bigger. Some are born male, changing to female. But in the case of the white muscle cracker, they're known as rudimentary hermaphrodites. And this doesn't necessarily mean that they're sex changing. What it does mean is that immature individuals have both male and female organs present. And depending on the environment and how many males and females are already in the population. This will determine whether that individual matures as male or matures as female. However, the other reproductive organ will still be present. However, it won't be in a mature form. It will be immature. So this maturity occurs at around 35 centimeters fork length, at which point that fish is about five and a half years old. In terms of their maximum age, the oldest specimen to ever have been aged was quite a while ago and that fish was 85 centimeters fork length and we do know that they get much bigger so there is potential for them to get much older. And that specimen of 85 centimeters was aged to 31 years old. So when they're around that size of the bag limit which is 60 centimeters total, we can look, consider that individual to be roughly 10 years old. When he started eating it, I saw bugs.
pulling it. So we first started worrying about the species when we saw a massive decline in catches in the PE area and this was between 1986 and 1996 where catch data suggested a decline of 80%. A follow up stock assessment in 2002 showed something similar where it's, when it suggested that only 20% of the population, natural population of white muscle cracker remains. However 20 years ago is quite a long time ago. And it's important for reasons like this to recognize that South Africa can truly have one of the best recreational fisheries internationally if we just collectively looked after our fish stocks a little better.